Good morning, good life, everyone. Welcome back to Amy TV, where we come together to help you go after the life you want. If you clicked on this video, you probably have at least one goal that you're excited about. I have about 82. Is that normal? Maybe you've gotten started towards your goal, maybe you haven't jumped in yet. Either way, there's one mistake I see people make that keeps their ideas daydreams and not real life. And that's what I wanna to talk to you about today. <laughs> No matter how far to your comfort zone your idea of success is, it's probably something that you have to work very hard on, otherwise you'd have it already. We all want what we don't have, and you know what? That is okay. It's what drives us. There's of course a healthy balance. You don't wanna be stewing in the things that you want and never doing anything about it. It's about that idea being so amazing, that level of success being so desirable that you will take action and do something about it. Will you do what it takes? Or are you too busy trying to figure out what the rest of the world thinks about this idea? If you want your path to success to be more like a freeway and less like a parking lot, we need to talk about the biggest mistake that I see people making so that you can avoid it and breeze on by. Before we dig into this conversation, I have to give a little bit of Twitter gratitude and this goes out to This Is Writer Mom. Yesenia, thank you so much for your time and attention to these videos. I acknowledge you and I appreciate you and I love that you retweeted this video. If you would like a little shout out here on Amy TV, it's very simple. All you have to do is follow me on Twitter and retweet my video when it comes out. Thank you to everybody who follows and retweets on Twitter. I, again, I love and appreciate your love and appreciation. Okay, so what's this big mistake that's keeping you from achieving your goal? I'm sure you're dying to know at this point, Amy. Way to tease it up. You may remember in a previous video, we talked about the biggest distractions that are killing your productivity. And there was one in particular that really resonated with you. Overdosing on advice. Wow, a lot of you have experienced this. This can take shape in so many ways and it's a scary trip up because of that. It's usually disguised as something that successful people do. But everything is in moderation and that is why this tends to be more of a speed bump than it is escalation for a lot of people. With the abundant amount of information we have in this internet age, it's very easy to fall into this trap of just looking for the information we want and trying to get all the results that we want without actually doing anything about it. When you Google a question and you get an answer, it's fairly addictive. It's why a lot of us don't remember a lot of things anymore. We just pull our phone out to answer a question, say at a dinner party where someone says, oh, who was it again that discovered America? Mm, I don't have to remember that. I can just type it into Google. <laughs> Look at me. God, it's scary. <sighs> but it's not just that. If you want to go on a diet and you want it to be a very specific way and you search for it, somebody probably created something just like it. If you want to start a business in a specific line of work and you want to know what someone has done just like it in the past, there's probably an ebook about it. This is all fantastic as long as we're not talking about the grapefruit diet and fake millionaire coaching, right? You want to learn from the smartest and best resources in the world whenever possible, but you also need to understand what you're truly capable of. If you do nothing but learn and absorb and never understand what it means for you to actually execute on something in your life, you will only continue to be the messenger for everybody else that figured out how to actually do it. Don't you love that person that's got not all the answers, but you're trying to figure out why they haven't done anything with the information they seem to always have. I'm trying to keep that from being you. Please. Let's talk about what a couple of different examples of overdosing on advice look like. Signing up for too many classes. Now, with the internet, again, you can find a course on anything, an ebook on anything. And so the tendency is, oh, there's a course on that. I'm going to buy it. There is a free webinar on that. I'm going to attend it. All these things that you do, you are either exchanging time or money or both. And that's great if you're starting from somewhere that is not executed. But if you actually have knowledge that you can test out, you have to go back and forth between the education and the action. I can see a chronic course taker from a mile away. Those are usually the people that I would have turned down to work with as coaching clients because I know that they just want to talk to me like I'm their therapist rather than hear from me on what I think that they should do because they're so busy telling me all the things they've learned in all their courses that they think that they actually have a handle. Yes, you have a handle on it. Awesome, why are we here? Why are we here? Another example of the class taker is the return to schooler. 
this is going to be a little controversial because I think my views on college are a little controversial. But I worry when I hear from people who haven't found direction after getting a degree, who haven't found a job, who haven't found a passion, and then they say, oh, so I'm going to go back to school. But it's just like not attached to anything. It's just I'm going to go back to school. So solve that problem. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I like. And so therefore, I'm going to go back and have a professor tell me one of these things. What? Oh, God. No, stop going into debt for someone else who has been given tenure to tell you what you should do with your life. Figure it out by yourself. Do something. Do do something. You could work at McDonald's and learn more about yourself than just go back to school for no freaking reason. Passionate, sorry. If you have a plan, if it's like, I need to go back to get this particular line of education because it's either required with what I want to do or I need to understand it more for some other reason. It's completely your prerogative. If there's a plan attached, I love it. But don't go get your master's because you think going into debt further is going to help you understand what you're passionate about. I just genuinely don't believe that. Another example of this overdose is asking experts to mentor you. It is almost 2020. Not only are we in the internet age, we can ask electronic devices to tell us a joke. Hey Siri, tell me a joke. I admit I was wrong about how good my chiropractor is. I stand corrected. That wasn't half bad, actually. <laughs> the greatest mentors that there could ever be know that they have something to share with you and have created some scalability in getting that information to you. Not everyone in the world, not everyone, but a lot of them are creating YouTube videos, they are making podcasts, they are writing blog posts, and remember the first big content sharing thing that people do, write books? Those are out there. So instead of saying, oh, I feel like I can't be a success unless this particular person, I'm going to email Amy. I'm going to email Amy and I'm going to say, Amy, you need to mentor me. I am the perfect mentee for you. Here's what I'm passionate about. Here's what I want to do. You need to spend your time on me. You are better off getting my attention a completely different way because first of all, you're just banking on the fact that I have time to take on a mentee right now. I'm just using myself as an example. And you're banking on the fact that I want to see you starting from scratch. I would much rather you say, Hey, Amy, just wanted to drop you a line in an email very quickly bullet pointed because I know you don't like to read lengthy emails. I took your advice from your morning routine video and this is how it changed my life. And then I took this piece of advice and this is how it changed my life. And then I took this piece of advice and I grew a YouTube channel. I don't know what it is. Tell me what you did with the information I'm sharing with you already. If you want to be mentored by someone, absorb everything that they do. Go find old TV shows of them if it's Bob Ross. There's this huge misconception that just because we are better connected to each other on the internet with social media, it means that everyone has to give everyone else the time of day. We may be peers on Twitter, but that doesn't mean that somebody has to change the way they manage their time to better guide you. Take what is already being offered to you for the low, low price of internet access and a computer and a mobile device, and LTE. Okay, that's beyond the point. Here's a fun one. Asking people questions that you could easily have Googled. This is awkward. <laughs> there have been so many times and I've tried just not to say it and now I'm choosing to say it in a video where people ask me a question and it's either something that they should Google and they will get much better information on it and they won't have to wait, or it's a piece of content I've absolutely created and they didn't bother to go looking for it, so they just ask me. So for example, if you were to tweet me, Amy, what is your morning routine? I would be very frustrated and I would share a link to my YouTube video. Even more likely, not gonna make the time to reply because I'm busy and that's totally something you can search for on my YouTube channel. Why haven't you done that yet? If you know I make videos and you know I talk about morning routines, connect the dots, action, action, action. This is a tough one. This one happens, I think, so much more than people even realize that they are doing. Maybe a lot of these are that way, but asking literally everyone around you, literally everyone, mailman included, 
what to do. You're grappling with something, you're trying to make a tough decision, you don't know what to do, you're like A or B, A or B, A or B, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm sure that's difficult. But if you never make the decision and you only ask what everyone else thinks on this, you're running a poll literally like you're running for president or something. You're not. There are only so many people whose opinions matter in this. Who are the people you live with? Your closest family, your dearest friends, your your mentors, your personal board of directors, yourself. Stop asking everyone what they think and go with your gut and ask the more meaningful questions on, I'm okay, let's say I'm gonna do this. Now I'm gonna ask my husband how he would feel about this adjustment if I were to do that, or how he would feel about me doing this. If you are asking better questions to better poll the audience that actually matters, game on. If you're just going around to the whole world and asking them if something sounds like a good idea, they're gonna say it's a good idea. We don't just want people to say we have good ideas, we want them to give us constructive criticism, especially when we have moments where we're actually asking for the criticism, because you know they give it to you when you don't ask for it. So ask for it in a meaningful way way. Something that's actually gonna make the difference for you. Something that could just be happening by default because of all these other things is never drawing a conclusion based on your own understanding, execution, and, and, and reasoning, but just going with something or repeating answers to things based on what someone else has determined. Whether it works or not, it's not smart for you to not have an opinion on something. And these days it feels like everyone's got an opinion on everything, but it's also very easy to fall in the trap of being vanilla, to fall in the trap of not having your own opinion or not being confident about That's it. That's a trap you don't wanna be in, trust me. Ben, there. And this one is a little bit of a curveball. It's the last one I'm gonna talk about and that is oversaturation. You're learning, you're taking classes, you're trying to execute on things, you're not seeing a lot of results right away. And after about a week of trying really hard on your new passion, you blame oversaturation. I was just watching the Grammys over the weekend and I remember talking to my friend Sophia and I said, do you know what I love about this? Absolutely love about this. I don't know who any of these people are. You could be negative and say, I'm getting old. I don't know who the latest artists are. Or you can see the silver lining in this and say, if the Grammys can have a huge amount of new artists as of the last five to 10 years, is that not the finest example of the fact that oversaturation doesn't exist? If music was only ever the popular people from the 60s or the 70s or the 80s and then everyone else just wasn't good enough or the times didn't change or there weren't fresh perspectives, there weren't people knocking down new barriers, it would just be a snooze fest. People wouldn't care about music the way that they do. The same goes for whatever you want. If you wanna start a blog, don't say it's oversaturated. If you wanna start a YouTube channel, don't say it's oversaturated. If you wanna go into beauty, don't say it's oversaturated. There is always opportunity to differentiate yourself in the way that you present this thing. And other people who have been ahead of you are not oversaturating or dominating, they're paving the way. So don't overdose on their advice and then not take it and then blame it on them as to why you're not taking it because that just sounds ridiculous. <laughs> like when you really spell it out like that, do you not feel like, oh gosh, I've done that. I've done that before. It's totally relatable. But the oversaturation conversation needs to stop. All right, let's talk about what we've learned here today with a tweetable. Swimming in advice is just interesting busyness. You're not ignorant, but you're not knowledgeable either. Take advice and weigh it with action for your own path to success and accomplishment. I wanna hear from you. Have you seen yourself stuck in advice land for too long? We all do it. What did you do to get out of it? What did it look like for you? Let's help each other. Share it in the comments below. And don't forget to check out amylandino.com where I share a lot more resources for you if you're trying to get more productive or have a better morning routine or just wanna know what the latest books that I'm reading are. You can find everything at amylandino.com. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. Cheers. I can see a chronic course classmate. <laughs> that was kind of cute, but I don't know if it works. Make sure I don't have a bra strap showing here. Just so much love around here, just so much love.
Well, that example went really poorly. 